A little while ago, I bought a 6th generation iPad off of Goodwill, and after not doing an iCloud bypass on it, I started dailying it. And you know what? It runs surprisingly well. This thing is the minimum spec for iOS 17, which at the time of recording is Apple's latest iOS version, and this runs really well. How can this be? Let's talk about it. First, I do need to address something. For this review, I was using iOS 16 instead of 17. There are a couple of reasons for this, and one of them definitely isn't about the iCloud bypass that I definitely didn't do. But really, the main reason is that iOS 17 just didn't really change that much over iOS 16, at least not enough to warrant upgrading because the performance really isn't going to be that different. Anyways, let's get to the video. First, I want to talk about battery life. One of the problems with using any portable device this old is the battery life and how batteries can degrade over time. For me, I got about eight hours of screen on time, which is very, very good. I'd give you a battery health number, but iPadOS just doesn't support that for some reason. Or maybe it's just the fact that this iPad is old. I don't really know. Nevertheless, your results may vary when using these old devices. With that in mind, let's talk about performance. When this iPad released, it was using a low-end processor, and even more so today. But that isn't to say that I can't get really good performance out of this thing. Watching videos in 1080p, doing light multitasking, and even a little bit of schoolwork, it all completes these tasks flawlessly. It's when you really get into gaming that this thing starts to struggle. This thing even struggles in a lighter game like Hearthstone. But for the majority of tasks and the majority of people who would use this type of device, it's pretty much fine. You know what else is struggling? My subscriber count. Go subscribe today. The iPad does do most tasks without getting relatively hot, which is pretty good. When doing graphic intensive tasks, the iPad can get kind of hot, but just putting a case on it like I did really solves most of your problems. I do want to touch on compatibility. While this iPad does support iOS 17, which is great, it doesn't support a lot of the quality of life features that I would expect from an iPad, namely Apple Pencil. While this iPad was one of the first iPad models to support an Apple Pencil, it only supports the first generation Pencil. So anyone who wants magnetic charging and pairing with their Apple Pencil shouldn't go for this iPad. It's not that big a deal, it's just something I wanted to touch on. As for the screen, iPad screens have looked pretty good for a large amount of time, and while this doesn't have true tone or any of that, the screen gets pretty bright and it still looks pretty good today. It's also in a pretty high resolution, so that's nice. Now let's talk about iPad OS. Now, for a long time, when people have come to me asking for a budget laptop to do just web browsing, YouTube video watching, and basic schoolwork on, I have recommended either going for a cheap used MacBook for one to three hundred dollars, by the way, we have a really great video on how some of these budget MacBooks hold up today. You should go check that out. Or getting a baseline or used iPad. For under $500, you can get a baseline iPad that has newer processors and will run pretty much most tasks for years. Or you can go into the used market and pick up some older iPad Pros that will still excel at many tasks and will last you just a very long time. It's a lot better of an option than buying a cheaper Windows laptop that will last you six months and then break down, much like your car did. And in reality, iPads are basically just laptops today anyways. I had known it for a while, but it really wasn't until I started dailying this iPad that I had realized just how far iPads have come in terms of being able to do productive things on them. You can multitask endlessly, plus you can connect flawlessly to Apple's ecosystem if that's your kind of spiel. It's just a good option nowadays. In fact, for a couple of days, instead of using my 12-year-old MacBook Pro to do some of my school, I did all of my school on the iPad and I had absolutely no issues with it at all. Plus, it was a lot more portable, the battery didn't die as quickly, and the charger wasn't as large. It was just a good experience, and I even wrote the majority of the script on the iPad that I'm talking about today. The conclusion? Well, Apple has done just an amazing job at supporting their devices for a long period of time. 
These iPads are pretty cheap and work incredibly well for the people who aren't doing graphic intensive tasks. And if you're one of the people that are wanting to do GPU intensive work on your iPad, then you probably aren't looking for a cheap used iPad anyway. You know what you are looking for though? This outro. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, then make sure you hit that like button. And if you really liked it, then you should consider subscribing. If you wanna help support us financially, then you can use the link in the description below to tip us. Tipping is really easy and you can donate any amount that you want and you even get your name featured in videos for a month after you tip. Oh, and here are the people that have tipped us in the last month. If you want to see new content from us in the future, then make sure you hit that notification bell. But while you're waiting for new content to come out, why don't you go check out our video on how old MacBook Pros hold up today. It's a very interesting video and some with some very surprising results. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.